Hi guys and welcome to this week's best of three battler. So we are playing this week. I am super happy to have him back on the channel after so long of not having him on here. We did play with Terence's team a long time ago. He played it for a week and then he came on um, amazingly and uh, we played the team together. It was a lot of fun. So it's great to have Terence back today. My opponent, I haven't even announced him. So I'm doing this all back to front, but we are playing. A good friend of mine, top VGC player, Terence Dre. So, it's going to be a lot of fun. Let's hop in, see. I haven't even decided what team I'm going to use today. I know whatever we have to do is just play solidly because um, Terence has got an absolutely outstanding team. Um, we could bring basketball doubles, I guess. It would give us probably a little a little heads up. I'm only messing around. Um, I think because we've only got one kind of team that we're currently playing in our battle spot. Uh, battle box and um, we're gonna play the the whimsicott team that we're kind of featuring on the channel this week so let's see how we get on in this best of three today um, against Terence like I said Terence has got a very solid team he's been kind of um, polishing it all season playing it all season just improving it and um, it's gonna be really tough um, and it is that polytoed muck team um, he has made a lot of changes since we featured it last on the channel but it's gonna be extremely extremely difficult so well versed with it and it is made up of Gyarados, Alolan Marowak, Politoed, Tapu Koko, Alolan Muck and Trevenant. So he's got the Trick Room mode there with the Trevenant um, to support the Alolan Marowak, the Alolan Muck um, and even the Politoed there. The Politoed brings the weather, kind of disrupts um, anything that, you know, puts on a lot of pressure with that Gyarados that can abuse that weather, the, the rain there with its water type attacks. Um, as far as I'm aware, I'm pretty sure it's got the Z move, but who knows? Terence might change things up. Tapu Koko obviously going to be able to abuse the rain as well if it's got access to things like Thunder. Um, but he does need to be careful if he brings out a lot of Marowak. That's one thing that we can kind of play into a little bit to kind of force him to bring that out maybe um, and take advantage of that. So it kind of disrupts his Tapu Koko as well as ours. Um, I think Whimsicott here is very good for us because we've got the sunny day on it. We've got the access to Tailwind and Taunt as well to shut down that opposing Trevenant. We do need to be very careful though around the um, Alolan Muck that we might see come out for Terence as well. Um, I think, let's think, what do we want to do? Maybe go. I think for this first match we'll go Crocodile and Alolan Marowak. Seems a bit strange with such a heavy rain core. But we do have access to Sunny Day, and if we can make use of that, then I think the rest of our Pokemon will be able to kind of do a really good job and and dealing with what the big threats are in terms of the side of the team. We're going to need to remove the the Marowak to to make sure that our, our Coco is able to deal with that uh, Gyarados. We're going to have to utilize our Intimidate as well. But we do see Gyarados, which is a shiny Gyarados that could kind of indicate that it could potentially have bounce Z flying attack that could be very threatening to our Whimsicott and the Politoed come out as well. Now it's likely here that we see hmm, the Marowak switch in for sure. We do see the rain come out for Terence. Oh no, I think we have to go Sunny Day regardless here. We we'll probably see the Politoed switch out, um, and do we just dazzle and gleam? The thing is, if that that Gyarados decides to go for a Dragon Dance here, um, could be pretty bad for us. But it's a kind of a free Dragon Dance from, um, and we can always intimidate the following turn and Sunny Day again. But I think it's probably better if we switch out Coco, bring in Crocodile, kind of anticipate the the Marowak switch in here, and in in Sunny Day, Crocodile with the Intimidate should be able to take a Hydro Vortex at least if that Gyarados decides to kind of fire one off at this point. So let's see what Terence does. Do bring in Crocodile, get the Intimidate off onto that Gyarados which is the most important thing here. Um, Gyarados actually withdrawing, okay so that is and Marowak coming onto the field, okay. And Politoed just protecting. And we are going to get the Sunday Day off, so that is a bonus. And by bringing the Crocodile in here, it kind of gives us a, a nice bit of pressure for that opposing Marowak, because 
Does the Gyarados come back in on that slot? Because I don't expect Terence to leave the Marowak in here just to take a, a potential Tectonic Rage at all. Um, so we could Tailwind. And we could double in. You've got to expect maybe a double switch here. Maybe Gyarados. I'm going to double into that slot here. I'm going to just crunch and Moonblast into that slot. Because you've got to imagine the Marowak kind of does switch out here. And the Politoed as well. Because of the, the sun. We might just see Gyarados come in. And the Marowak just protect here. Which is quite likely because we could just see... No, so no Protect coming out. So we should be able to... I don't know if... Uh, minus one Crunch... Probably not going to be picking up the KO here. So we could have Tectonic Raged into that slot. That is a bulky, bulky Marowak. Flare Blitz coming out. Where is it going to be into? Pooked out. It is picking up the KO. Okay. But that recoil. Not great. Because the Marowak goes down. And now Tapu Koko is free to come in. And we can just start causing all sorts of chaos. Knowing that the opposing Marowak is not even a thing anymore. So we can start launching these... Electric type attacks off as and when we want to. <coughs> we do see a lot of muck come in. Not ideal because it does put a lot of pressure onto Coco. Um. Hmm. But I think a Moonblast and the Thunderbolt into that muck might. I don't know if it'll be enough, will it? Probably won't be enough. But what we could do is... I don't really want to let this 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 Gyarados get set up at all. I'm going to taunt the Gyarados to stop any potential Dragon Dances. And I'm going to just go for a Vault Switch into that muck. Because any chip at this point onto that map would be good. Yeah, and that should now be in Thunderbolt range for us to take down. So if we can move our maneuver uh, Tapu Koko back in. And get ourselves into a position where we can get a T-Ball off into that map. It's going to help us massively going forward in, in the next... To kind of try and close out this game. Yeah, so Gyarados actually going for a taunt. But blocked because of our taunt and Gung Shot coming out into Marak. But Marak able to take that quite comfortably here. Okay. So. I think that Muck's probably in Flare Blitz range. But does the Gyarados switch out into Holly Todd? Because it's taunted. It's not really doing much. Um. This is a 50-50 here because if the Muck switches out into the Polito, the Gyarados could go for the um, the Hydro Vortex. I think what I'm going to do is just set up a Tailwind and just protect Marowak this turn. Just in case we do see that play come out. So Gyarados is actually going to be the one switching out. So we could have went for that Sunny Day and Flare Blitz into that Muck slot. But I think what Terence is going to want to try and do here is set up a board position where he can get me down to two Pokemon. And probably perish with that, that Politoed. So, huh, I do need to go for the sunny day here, to, to be honest. Um... And I probably need to go for the Flare Blitz into that muck as well at the same time. Because otherwise we will lose Marowak to a knockoff at this point. But I'm just wondering if a Flare Blitz, minus one Flare Blitz in the sun, should be enough to take that muck down from this position. But we might see the Gyarados just switch in on that slot. To get, but then again, we're kind of pinning what the Politoed does with the Sunny Day players as well. We do see the Muck switch out. 
Gyarados is going to come in. We could have actually went there for a sword stance with our Marowak, which would have put us into a really, really good position. Sunny day, so let's see what this Politoed goes for. I'm just going to launch off Scald into to Marowak, maybe, just to try and chip it. We do get the Flare Blitz off, because we are faster with the Tailwind. We should still do decent enough damage, which it does. Yeah. And a skull coming out. Let's see what this is like. Okay, so Marowak will go down to another one of those. Critical hit, which is a bit unfortunate. Really unfortunate, to be honest. Um... Hmm. I think we just Moonblast into the Gyarados here. There's a Politoed. I don't think the Politoed switches out right now. I think it stays in and goes for another. Um... And how many turns of Tailwind have we got? we got two, so we're alright protecting here. Yeah, I think the Politoed stays in and goes for another Skull to try and get rid of that Marowak. But it doesn't. It doesn't. And Muck coming back in. What's this Gyarados going to go for here? Is it going to go for a Taunt this time into maybe a Z-move to remove the Marowak from the field? Even through a Taunt, so we could have just doubled into it, really. Moonblast is doing a good chunk of damage, and there we are going to see that. So we are going to lose Marowak, unfortunately, through the Protect there. So we would have been better off going for a double attack into that Gyarados this next turn. But it is in Moonblast range, and that Muck is also in Thunderbolt range from the Coco. So we'll get Coco back in. And I'm pretty confident a Life Orb Thunderbolt from the range that Muck's in will pick up the KO onto it. So we can just quite happily here just go for a, a Moonblast and a T-Ball into that map. And hopefully we can lock the game up from this point. And see what Terence does to adjust and see if he can kind of get himself out of this little pin that we've kind of put him into. I think the big thing for us was getting rid of that Marowax early on. And even though we lost the, the Crocodile, it's kind of a, a worthy sacrifice at that point. Making sure that Tapu Koko, who's a, a big kind of hitter, to come in and just make sure he can... In, can deal with these these threats that we needed to so we see Politoed switch in for that muck rain does start to pour down we are going to get a t-bolt off into the Politoed and take it down in one hit so that's really good information going into the next game we know that a t-bolt in electric terrain will just be able to kill that 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 Politoed straight up which is really nice get the moon blast off into the Gyarados which is going to be enough and then we've just got that muck to deal with and this is kind of fine because we know Tapu Koko is going to outspeed Whimsicott. Um, so we'll be able to get the T-Bolt off first, but we can just double into it now. Um, and this should be game one for us. So hopefully... Let's see. I wonder if Terence is kind of ticking over any damage cards, whether this muck can take this or not. If not, we lose Coco potentially. Okay, so maybe trying to stall out the electric terrain. It's definitely one one way out from here, and he may as well play for it, and I think it's a good idea playing for that. But how many turns of electric terrain have we got left? Three. Maybe just a little bit too much. We need to click in with T-Bolt. We don't want to time out unnecessarily. So there we're going to see, is it going to be enough? Oh, it's not quite enough. Okay. Hmm. Now he has to he has to target down the Tapu Koko here. Let's see what this Moonblast damage is going to be like as well, because it could potentially actually... It's going to be really tight. Gunk Shot coming out into Tapu Koko. We'll pick up the KO. 
Ooh, this is going to be super, 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 super close. I don't know if the Moonblast will actually pick up the KO here. But we are sashed. we still got our sash intact. So we should be alright as long as we don't see any Shadow Sneaks coming out. They're going to get the Moonblast. It is enough. Oof. So close, so close. But we do manage to kind of nick Game 1 from under Terence's nose. So, um... That's quite good for us going into the next game. So we'll wrap things up there, guys. This is uh, game one in today's episode. We'll be back with game two tomorrow. And hopefully, if it goes to game three, which will be brilliant for you guys, we'll be back with that on Friday. So I'm going to wrap things up. As always, if you've enjoyed today's episode, do let me know what your thoughts are on the game today, on the teams that we've been playing today on the matchup in general i'd love to hear your comments and thoughts on that as always if you've enjoyed the episode do drop a like on the video it's massively appreciated and if you're new to the channel make sure to subscribe because we have lots of vgc content going on in the channel and it will be ramping up another notch when ultra sun and ultra moon come out in a few weeks time so i'm gonna leave it there guys whatever you're doing have an amazing evening and i will see you all tomorrow thanks so much for tuning in and we'll be back with game two very shortly so until then guys take care of yourselves and bye bye